Monday, September 19th, 2005. Two British operatives conducting covert surveillance in the hostile city of Basra, Iraq, are taken prisoner of war after being compromised by a group of corrupt Iraqi police following a tense shootout during car chase. But little did their captors know that the two men were special operators of the British Army's Tier 1 unit, the 22nd SAS, unleashing a hellish response from their pissed off teammates. And after being given explicit orders to stand down, the SAS unit denied their leadership and executed a rogue hostage rescue mission. Two years following the invasion of Iraq, and one year despite the capture of Saddam Hussein, in 2005, Iraq was becoming as hostile as ever, and the small southern city of Basra was no exception. As September 5th of that same year, two British soldiers would be killed in Basra by a roadside IED, and only two days later, on September 7th, 16 Basran civilians would perish following a car bomb. Given this cluster of violence, US and coalition forces began to zero in on Basra and quickly learned the city was run by an incompetent and corrupt police chief linked to the Mahdi terror cell, who British SBS and SRR commandos targeted during a critical counterinsurgency campaign. This police chief was a crucial link for the notorious British intelligence agency, MI6, who quickly chartered a mission, dubbed Operation Hathor, of which they assigned two special operators from the Tier 1 unit, the 22nd SAS, the British equivalent of Delta Force. Their objective, to keep eyes and ears on the police chief within the city of Basra. These special operators, Campbell and Griffith, were to dress in native garbs and fully embed themselves within the city. Their mission was to gather intelligence and perform a wreck by telling the chief and his officers while operating an inconspicuous Iraqi taxi cab. And by September 19th, the mission was a go. Campbell and Griffith entered the city of Basra and positively ID'd the chief. However, during their tale, the two were forced to merge into an Iraqi checkpoint. The men attempted to skate through, but the officers, recognizing their British accents, quickly became hostile. The officers ordered the operators out of the car, at which point Campbell and Griffith simultaneously opened fire, killing two officers at the checkpoint. They hit the gas and made a run for the city, but their gutless taxi cab made evasion nearly impossible. They hopped out on foot and were quickly cornered by an angry mob and taken into custody by police. Basra police sent photographs of Campbell and Griffith to a popular Iraqi news outlet celebrating their capture. Meanwhile, the bureaucrats back in London were taken by surprise and slow to act. However, in the city of Baghdad, news reached the SAS's special forces support group in the form of a TV broadcast depicting the men beaten and subdued and in queue for capital punishment. The SAS team took immediate action. 20 operators of A Squadron hightailed it to Basra and began plotting out a sophisticated rescue mission. SAS operators closer to the region on the outskirts of Basra vectored a Predator UAV and began maintaining 24-hour surveillance on the prison. Meanwhile, British infantry and armored units were dispatched to surround the prison. And an irate gathering of locals ensued. The protesters, fueled by anti-coalition sentiments, grew increasingly agitated, and the British government took advantage of the chaos by authorizing the immediate rescue of the operators inside. As the SAS teams from Baghdad arrived in the area of Basra and began their loadout, the protesters' agitations quickly turned to violence. The crowds pelted the British forces with stones and Molotov cocktails, resulting in a warrior IFV catching on fire and causing injuries to three soldiers. And with resistance from both protesters and militants, the streets of Basra quickly turned into a battleground. Fearing further escalations, the British government issued immediate orders 
for the SAS to stand down and the infantrymen to retreat, leaving Campbell and Griffith stranded and in the hands of the Basra police. And with time running out, the pair fought to keep themselves alive by giving their captors just enough information without compromising any real secrets, a skill set SAS operators obtain as far back as selection. Meanwhile, the British government began to take a more diplomatic approach in their recovery after sending two British officers to the prison to deliver an ultimatum. Their mission took an unexpected turn when they too were captured and held within the confines of the prison. And to make matters worse, simultaneously, the Iraqi police opted to hand over Campbell and Griffiths to the Iraqi militia. They were disguised once again in local garbs and then placed in the trunk of a police car destined for a nearby safe house. Unbeknownst to the Iraqi authorities, the UAV overhead tracked the relocation, concerned that their fellow operators might face execution at the hands of the Iraqi militia. The SAS, against explicit orders to stand down, defied their command and decided to take matters into their own hands. The British government authorized conventional forces to conduct a raid on the police station and free the captured officers. The SAS took advantage of this window and conducted a simultaneous raid of their own on the safe house. And by 9 p.m., warrior IFVs and Challenger tanks breached the prison walls, enabling infantry units and a select few SAS operators from A Squadron to stage a swift rescue of the officers as the remainder of A Squadron launched their assault on the safe house. The team flooded the building through numerous entry points, imposing textbook hostage rescue tactics, disorienting the captors and controlling the violence. As they made their way through the compound, Campbell and Griffiths were nowhere in sight, leading the team to fear that the pair were moved once again. However, a further sweep into the compound revealed Campbell and Griffith handcuffed in a bathroom and still alive. The team provided medical attention and extracted the men from the compound. By all accounts, the mission unfolded seamlessly and without a hitch, including the infantry assault and rescue of the British officers within the Basra prison. Eyewitness reports claimed over 150 prisoners escaped during the assault, many of whom were falsely imprisoned. Calls were made for a thorough investigation into both Griffith and Campbell's capture and the subsequent events which followed. The Ministry of Defense initially attempted to deny that the unauthorized rescue mission ever took place, but later retroactively sanctioned the mission, arguably due to its success. One year later, on December 25th of 2006, as part of Operation Sinbad, British troops from the 1st Battalion the Staffordshire Regiment raided the Basra police station once again, killing seven armed Shia militants and freeing 127 prisoners, illegally detained and on the path to execution. They then demolished the prison entirely. In the end, the SAS stayed true to and exemplified their motto. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. There's a lot more mini docs in the works and you don't want to miss them. And also be sure to cop new merch at ethosthreads.com slash collections slash popomedic. If we sell enough inventory, we can get batty off the goddamn front page. For those of you who don't know, Ethos Threads is a disabled veteran owned and operated company. They make high quality merchandise. This isn't your cheap run of the mill YouTuber clothing material. This stuff is high quality, comfortable, and it lasts a very long time. So be sure to check out the website. I'll leave a link in the description box down below. It's a great way to support the channel. And be sure to check me out over on Instagram as well. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.